I would start by showing this uh, page here because in 2008, uh, as you can read here, well, this isn't directly from 2008, but it refers to the 2008 Democratic National Convention. Zinni Abram, one of first bloggers to cover 2008 Democratic National Convention, Heck, Google covers it up, and I made up for that in fine fashion by um, showing the east the cover. Let me just play this for you. Hey, everybody, this is history you should see because Google's not showing it to you. Let me show you. Uh, Oakland blogger to cover Democratic National Convention. You know how I found this? I actually had to go to Bing. Look at this. I had to go to Bing right here. This is the Bing. Bing, not Google. This is Bing. And type Zinni Abraham 2008 Democratic National Convention first blogger, right? See that? First blogger, Oakland Tribune in quotes, to get the real news. There's my bio from Oakland News Online, LinkedIn, my videos from my YouTube channel, and then this. Look at that. Oakland blogger to cover Democratic National Convention. So you click on that, and there it is. Okay, by the what was the Tribune then, and now it's called the East Bay Times. Oakland blogger to cover Democratic National Convention. And it reads, as the Democratic National Convention gets underway in August, Oakland blogger Zinni Abraham will be on the convention floor with a microphone poised to pick up discussions of race, predatory lending, infrastructure improvement, and other issues of concern to Oakland. Abraham and his Zinni Zeitgeist blog at Zinni2005.blogspot.com have won a coveted credential from the Democratic National Committee to cover the convention as a blogger and journalist. He was selected late last week as one of 124 bloggers to receive credentials from an applicant pool of more than 400. Zinni Zeitgeist is usually about Abraham's take on political issues of the day, often the Democratic presidential contest with a smattering of posts about pop culture and sports. Boy, has that changed. The Democratic National Committee said its criteria in choosing which bloggers to let into what no doubt will be a crowded and history-making Democratic Denver convention are that they cover state and local politics and have a high daily audience based on statistics from Technorati, a website that tracks blogs. Among applicants whose sites met those criteria, the committee looked for blogs that, quote, stand out as effective online organizing tool and or agent of change. And then it goes on to read, Abraham has not been shy to take on controversial issues. He has written about predatory lending, accusing check cashing centers of exploiting the poor and crime and criminals. He already has specific plans for what topics he'll focus on at the convention. Quote, I'm concerned about Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and the race issue. I really want to see if Democrats are going to rally around Obama unanimously, Abraham said Monday. I want to know specifically if people who are Clinton supporters, if they are really going to rally behind Obama. If not, I want to know if it's because of race. And he will report on any discussions of race, whether polite or not. He also plans to report in detail on the development of a democratic platform with respect to what degree the platform represents domestic issues like predatory lending and credit card rates, our enormous infrastructure problems, and what I call keeping jobs at home. Abraham has been an outspoken supporter of Obama and raised about 17000 to his campaign. That partisanship did not seem to phase the DNC, although many of the other blogs selected are less committed to one candidate. Many of the blogs represent Democrats from particular states, such as the Blue Jersey, Blue Indiana, and Blue Hampshire blogs. Abraham, 45, is an entrepreneurial businessman having founded Sports Business Simulations, of Oakland five years ago, but he has put his time in politics. He worked for former Oakland Mayor Jerry Brown in economics as an economics advisor and then as the Oakland Alameda County Sports Commissioner. That should say executive director, but whatever. 
Abraham stayed, started his blogging career in 2006 writing about sports, but then he couldn't resist taking on a, a talking about politics. Over time, he separated his own political and cultural ramblings in the Zenny Zeitgeist, distinct from his larger SBS Voices sports blog, and wrote increasingly about politics following a Democratic campaign as it progressed tooth and nail. The day after the New Hampshire primary, his blog posting received 44,000 hits. Uh, since then, his audience has steadily grown. He is invited by CNN to post a video blog as a sample for its YouTube CNN Democratic debates last year. Afterward, links to his blog started showing up elsewhere on other political sites. Now Zinni Zeitgeist receives about 60,000 unique visitors a month on average. That was by Barbara Grady. Um, some corrections, actually, I started Oakland's first blog, Oakland Focus, in 2004. Uh, Zinni Zeitgeist came actually alongside it. And uh, on top of that, um, my blog posted to receive 44,000 unique visitors, not hits. Hits are much more than that, but it was 44,000 unique visitors. Um, and so I re started much earlier than that. She also reported here that I, uh, I worked for former Oakland Mayor Jerry Brown as economic advisor. I was actually economic advisor under Elihu Harris before Jerry, but under Jerry Brown, I was the head of the Super Bowl 39 organ, uh, committee, and I started the Oakland Alameda County Sports Commission. But I do all of this because on Google, I should be able to type the same thing and get that result. Instead, on Google, I didn't get that result, Danny Sullivan. This is what, and I say it just like that, this is what uh, I got um, by contrast when I took that search term and put it in Google. And it was absolutely horrifying to see uh, the result that I'm about to show you. And so as I, I put it in here, all right, take a look. As I put it in here for Google search, right, and I hit, hit return, this is Google. Look at what it gets me, gives me. Some gobbledygook from C-SPAN, uh, what people asked, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, all right, and it says uh, on the Democratic National, it says introduced, produced by Zinni Abraham. All right, uh, local government, something about Barbara Jordan, CNN, you know, nothing about uh, Abraham Lincoln. Zinni gets Media Innovator Award and then from Oakland News Now and then Jovanka Beckles. And then there's, is it on page two? Well, let's check page two and see if it's on page two. No, it's not on page two. There's nothing as uh, Peter Liu, oh, but there's nothing me. And see that? All right. They say, in order to show you the most relevant results, we have omitted some entries very similar to the 16 already displayed. So you click on that. It, it basically, folks, it doesn't get any better. All right. Um, and But there's no mention of anything specific to me. All right. Look at that. That's shameful. Danny Sullivan of Google. What's going on, man? What are you guys doing? Subscribe to Zenny62 on YouTube and bookmark OaklandNewsNow.com. Oh, and by the way, I call this techno racism, and this is why. It's a technical way of not or making sure you don't see something that a black person did because you don't think that black person should be, for example, one of the first bloggers at the Democratic National Convention. Because I got the reactions from some people, uh, most notably the person who started Daily Cost, who was livid that I was selected and in some sort of ridiculous and very immature retaliatory fashion didn't invite me to his uh, big tent, which was outside the DNC, okay? Me, we raised a big stink about it. I thought it was, uh, rather than saying congratulations, all right? I knew what that was about. I saw who he invited. I thought it was absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, and then, they, and then they'll say, well, I'm not racist, but it's easy to say that because you're not, you, you, you might think it's not being racist because you're not using the N word or something, you're not doing something violent. But look, the bottom line is you're trying to exclude someone who's black. There are a number of, and Barbara didn't point this out, but there are a number of African American bloggers that were in that list of the 124 that went to the Democratic National Convention. I was really happy about that. 
but did you see them in Marcos' big tent? No, you didn't. See you later. Yeah, so I made that because fast forward to today, and what's happened since then is that bloggers are not recognized by the Democratic Party. And there are still, yet and still, there are bloggers on the left and black bloggers within that. Now, who all of them are, I don't know, because the resources, online resources that have been active to find them are in many cases outdated, many years old. But the Democratic Party, which recognized bloggers in 2008, today doesn't. I went to for the third day, and I'm privileged that Zenia 62 Media is a credentialed media organization for the 2020 Democratic National Convention. But when you get into the press room, even if you press your button to raise hand and say, hey, I have a question, the people they consistently pick represent established white media organizations. So if you have a small new black organization, well, forget it. Um, and that's been my experience. It's really a point that calls into question the extent to which the Democratic Party understands how to marshal media in the now heading into the third decade of the 20th century. Because much of media today, by many, is left to two platforms Facebook and Twitter, and little else. Websites for news are going down by the wayside. There's still bloggers, but who out there is doing what? There are influencers like myself talking, but the party does not do a thing to marshal us, to bring us under one big tent. And that's a huge mistake that has to be rectified because on the Republican side, everything that right bloggers do is described under one term, conservative media, but you never hear anyone use the term left media, okay, or liberal media, okay, or progressive media, all right? Progressive media you do hear to a degree, but not liberal media or left media or democratic bloggers. And it's because there's no effort to marshals. Maybe you would say, I should do that, okay, I should, but even if I do, what guarantee do I have the party's going to recognize us? We would simply have to beat and loud, beat and yell in a cyber fashion to get our message across. Okay, so be it. But it's not a good idea because I've been there to be at war with your party because it doesn't do the party any good. It doesn't do you any good. And at the end of the day, as we saw in 2016, you have hard feelings all the way around. I tried to warn the party in 2016 that Republicans were better organized than we were online and had a better approach and coherent message. I tried to tell the Democratic Party that in 2016, I was not paid attention to. I was rebuffed from attending the convention as press or, and I tried to tell everybody what was going on, even to the point of getting emails of top brass, thanks to a download from rookie leaks that was available to say, Hey, you know, you, you all need to start paying attention to what's happening in digital media and have a coordinated response and marshal your bloggers, get your bloggers and vloggers to help get people who are left content creators out there telling your story. 
it is shameful for the Democratic Party to not at all have, I mean, not have any effort in this way. Just sort of leaving it to the winds and calling on the Wall Street Journal three times in a row. Wall Street Journal is a conservative publication. It is not liberal. Okay, and there's nothing in the law that says that you have to give conservative media top, um, top position, okay? And Pop Silly says, uh, uh, well, what did this tell you, dang brother, think? Well, I mean, what does it tell me? I, I'm telling you what it tells me, okay? The question is, what does it tell you, all right? Because I don't know who you are. I don't know that you're a blogger. You're not using your real name. So who are you, all right? I don't know, okay? But what does it tell me? I just said it before you walked in. I'll repeat it. We're not coordinated. That's what it tells me. That's We're not coordinated. And I think worse, it tells me that we're under sort of this authoritarian thinking that says that you have to get your message out by either Twitter or Facebook, and that's it. And those platforms are owned by Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg. So basically, I have to go to Jack Dorsey and Mark Zuckerberg to get my message out. That's bad. All right? Okay? All right? But Pop has, uh, he says what it tells him is that Democrats are conservative. But well, Papa, that wasn't always the case. And see, you came in late because had you arrived uh, when I started, and I can understand that, you know, you've just seen this and I appreciate your being here. Let me say that, okay? But, uh, and I want to take this on up again uh, because I've, this has been thinking in my head for some time, all right? And it reflects a fear I've had. Like, for example, I sent an email to the uh, representatives for the Democratic Convention for Press, and I said, hey, uh, I explained that I'm an African-American-owned, uh, I'm running African-American-owned, I'm the owner of Zenny 62 Media, Delaware Corporation, and so on. And interestingly, today, the person they trot on as the head of the national policy campaign for Biden for America is African-American. Great. But my point is, so what? We've had decades upon decades of, you know, what, centuries of African-Americans who have not necessarily been there for other African-Americans, okay? I'm not saying this person isn't, and I'm not, all right, uh, uh, I'm not um, making that statement, but I am making the statement that there needs to be a coordinated effort and um, that you don't give your media message over to publications that are conservative, all right? But Democrats are conservative? No, Democrats are not conservative. I mean, that's not the case at all, not classically conservative. Um, do we have conservative Democrats? Of course we do. And I think the definition of that has changed over time, but that's another story for another time. What I'm talking about is media outreach, and, and I'm saying that we don't have a coordinated media effort. I don't have a press kit from anybody. Where's the Biden press kit for left bloggers? Where's, where's the Biden effort that shows that it has identified left bloggers, video bloggers like myself, to get out the message? I don't care if it's one or two. Great. Start with one or two and then ask those folks to get two more and two more and two more. Okay. That's how you run a campaign online. And that's really what's needed in the middle of a pandemic. And we're not doing it. We're not doing it. Okay. So, hey, do I need to be the one that starts it? It would seem so. Uh, it would seem so. Okay. So um, that's my my point I want to make here. I didn't mean to have a long, 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 long live stream about this, but I wanted to get this message out that we as a party have to get back to taking care of our own media producers. People who produce left media is not a new thing. 
I'm evidence of that. Subscribe to Zinni62 and bookmark oaklandnewsnow.com. See ya.